so the brand comes later it's just the experience which comes first yeah. uh, and then experience builds a brand covid changed the whole world mm. whole world right there was a time when we would go to the shop today shop comes to you rebel foods has today in the country demonstrated success and scale but uh, i think you need to be agile and open to you know changes we eat sleep drink breathe customer focus right like for an offline store the whole store ambiance is your branding for uh, for delivery oriented brands it's the packaging which is your real estate food is emotion and food is addiction <laughs> Shant Villain uh, thank you so much for joining today you know what we are going to talk and what i want both of you to share with us is extremely important for every business today and more so in our country where we have so much of data so many users so many customers is customer ko khush kaise rakhna and how do you make sure that the customer is loyal customer stays with you and you are winning them in a very very competitive market So Nishant, we'll begin with you. Tell us about Rebel Foods. Know it as we know it. Know it right now is a uh, internet strong company. We uh, have uh, multiple brands, and we deliver food at customers' doorsteps. Mm-hmm. Slowly, we're getting into an offline space as well. We are opening our uh, multi-brand food courts under the name of Eatshare. But yes, Genesis was back uh, in turn eight, nine, ten. Uh, Fasos was a single brand wrap and rolls company, aiming to fulfill need gap of. Kolkata style rolls, uh, as our founders envisioned it, uh, and as we went on to our journey, we learned from customers, learned from the market, and we understood that the market is much, much more, more bigger and it's evolving. Uh, one thing which we always think that there is enough food out there. We open any food app, there are hundreds of restaurant in any locality, in any cuisine, uh, and we feel that there is enough food and enough supply in the market. But what really is true is that. uh the availability of quality food is really limited this is actually across cuisines across pin codes uh, and this is what we have seen over time that if you have a good uh popular or rather good restaurant which offers good food and good experience customers latch on to it and it, it's not about they there already competition in the market if you are at the right price point giving a hygienic quality food uh you will see growth in sales customer love and repeat so that's how you know rebel foods has grown uh broadly if i talk about you know there have been three light bulb moments for rebel foods to become where it is right now uh the first one you know fasos opened as a wraps and roll joint which was more uh, retail customer facing offline uh but we figured out uh, that you know what matters to customer is quality of food customers really don't recollect the ambiance of the place they remember the food and the uh you know the the brand uh, association they have in their mind and we could deliver that in in, in a cloud uh, format um, which is better economics we got into cloud kitchen concept we pioneered that concept and now i think it's a it's a very known concept uh, second light bulb moment happened when we uh, you know understood that customers associate uh, specialist brands to a cuisine uh, so they will go to brand for a pizza they'll go to a brand for a biryani and so and so forth uh, and at the same time we as customers we oscillate between different food missions so on a week they will like want to have a thali or a lunch or a light meal evenings we want to have a wrap or a burger on a weekend we want to have a sumptuous biryani or a pizza in a group gathering so we oscillate between a group serve single serve and we oscillate between a regular meal and an indulgent meal so along these axes various food categories are spread and we as consumers we move across these uh, you know missions during different times of the day and times of the week so how can we deliver uh, you know good food via different brands in each of these food missions and therefore our multiple brands came in uh, like sweet tooth for desserts bahrus biryani for biryani avan story for pizza lunch box for lunch and so and so forth we have a plethora of brands the third light bulb moment came in when um, we strengthened our operating system which is essentially our kitchens our technology our supply chain our culinary experience in our delivery experience all linked by tech and we said that okay this operating system will be good enough uh, or rather we will build an operating system to bring multiple food brands 
which will come in scale. Like iconic world second largest burger brand Wendy's is on our network. We are the master franchisee of them. We have scaled them to about 150 locations and growing them fast as we speak. There are multiple brands which are uh, with us in a different uh, arrangement like Mad Over Donuts, Natural Ice Cream, uh, Zomos. There are multiple more coming on plate. So, so now we are trying to, you know, fulfill each customer's any mission, food mission through a brand of their choice in every neighborhood. That's what we are trying to fulfill. But along the journey, what we have figured out that, as you rightly said, customers are demanding. They want good experience each time. Uh, so I think the royal mantra for us is like, if you give good experience to a customer every time, you know, you will that customer and that loyalty of that customer and everything else will be more uh, a supporting character. Yeah, and you had said something uh, very powerful, which I remember, is that customers are not loyal to brands, but customers are loyal to experience. Yes, so so we, we have, again, uh, felt that, seen that and experienced that, you know, if you try to build a brand, uh, say, purely by marketing or you you try to say, I am a brand and you do things from being a brand perspective versus you just try to give customer what they want, delight them, give them good experience, customers will love you. And hence a brand will get created, not the other way around. And when you come from a brand's perspective, have the entire orchestration around being a brand, and then, you know, you deliver a semi-good or you know fluctuating experience all the time then the brand is not built brand is built from true customer love right uh, and you think about any industry uh, you are out there when you choose a fridge from a particular company you go buy a clothes from a particular company it's just that because you have taken goods and services you have loved them people have appreciated you for what you purchased and you have had good experiences over time you say okay i'll go to this brand for this product or service so the brand comes later it's just the experience which comes first yeah. uh, and then experience builds a brand Melind, you have worked with brands, you are working on experiences and you interact with such large customers and data sets. Tell us when it comes to this world of, you know, communication, this world of the omni-channel world that we are operating in, how do you, you know, use this to create that kind of indexing, to create that kind of leverage for yourself? Shraddha, I so much resonate with what Nishant was saying, right? Uh, he he spoke about saying a consumer eats different things at different times, right? He may have something for lunch. He may have something as a snack in the afternoon. He might have something else for dinner. So he follows a customer, right? So as always when you're shipping or when you're in right, follow the sun, yeah. follow north, right? Was the point, right? I come from a very simple philosophy of communication. Every enterprise wants to talk to or talk with its customer, right? Started with SMS. You can say it in the same way. SMS. Yeah. Which is in different channels. Right? Over a period of time, as a consumer myself, I have seen an SMS, a WhatsApp, an RCS, a Viber. You go to Korea, you go to Talk, you go to China, you go to WeChat, you go to Japan, you go to Line Popular, you go to Thailand, you go to Line कहीं टेलीग्राम पॉपुलर होगा कभी सिग्नल आया जब व्हाट्सएप में चैलेंजेस आए राइट अगर आप यूएस में जाओगे तो अभी भी एसएमएस एमएमएस बहुत ही पॉपुलर है इंडिया में वॉइस का भी रिवॉल्यूशन देखा हुआ है राइट सो बेसिकली व्हेन यू आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट एक्सपीरियंसेस फॉर ब्रांड्स टू एंश्योर दैट आई एम एबल टू टॉक टू माई कंज्यूमर इन द चैनल ऑफ इज चॉइस जहाँ वो जाता है राइट अब ये ना मिलिन डिसाइड करता है ना निशान डिसाइड करता है कि कंज्यूमर कौन से चैनल पर जाएगा वो ईमेल पे जाएगा या व्हाट्सएप पे जाएगा या आरजीएस पे जाएगा एसएमएस पे जाएगा ये मेरा चॉइस नहीं है राइट बट व्हेन आई डिलीवर एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑन टू हिम ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इन विच स्पेस दैट वी प्ले बिकॉज एवरी ब्रांड वांट्स टू सॉल्व दैट या राइट टेल मी वन ब्रांड हु सेज आई डोंट वांट टू टॉक टू अ कंज्यूमर ऑफ माइंड नन नन आई मीन आई हैव सीन वर्ल्ड अक्रॉस फ्रॉम जापान टू यूएस टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया टू कनाडा I don't know of a single brand who says I don't want to talk with and talk to or converse with my customer. None, right? Loyalty or experiences are fundamental attribute of a product and an experience. But we often misunderstand loyalty. Loyalty is not about how many loyalty points he has. Loyalty is about the pain which a consumer is willing to pay for a brand to consume that experience. The only two places where I have seen real loyalty in the world is in a ramen outlets in Tokyo, where 
at 12 o'clock in the afternoon a queue starts because they want to be in the queue to eat that ramen of that chef experience that in japan to do that and second loyalty i have seen is an apple where a person stands at a queue in the night to say i'm willing to pay a premium so i'm willing to suffer that's my loyalty agar aapko main 15% discount deke x to y shoe or x outlet to y outlet mein move kar diya wo loyalty thodi hai wo to price hunting hai this how do we really do it a you have a great product and you are able to follow a choice of a consumer in the choice in which he wants to interact with you right today covid changed the whole world whole world right there was a time when we would go to the shop today shop comes to you i mean i have done programs at the time of covid where right from applying lipstick and training how to apply nail enamels we have done videos of tr- brands trying to sell, sell it via that tanish case studies very very popular right they had during covid time video calls being done with appointment setting because people did not travel shaadi to tab bhi bhi ho hi rahi thi yeah if if you look at that right it will keep on changing so for us in the today's world simplifying communication to deliver delightful experiences using data in a trusted world is now the paradigm shift that we are seeing yeah right because if you look at even what rebel is doing right technology has to be backed by support of safety security he wants to be very sure ki a relevant banda is buying from me right so today's world is not just remaining simple messaging it is now simple messaging to deliver delightful experiences on a channel of a choice of a consumer in a safe and trusted environment so the paradigm has completely changed ये तो गिवन है या अभी प्रोडक्ट एट्रीब्यूट तो गिवन है आई मीन माय फेवरेट फूड इज जैपनीज सो आई कैंट से माय नंबर वन इज एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई डोंट थिंक दैट दे हैव जैपनीज प्रोडक्ट राइट नाउ आई मे बी रॉन्ग बट व्हाटएवर आई नो आई डोंट थिंक दे हैव बट माय सेकंड बिगेस्ट फेवरेट फूड इज बिरयानीज एंड आई एम अ बेरियोस बिरयानी फैन व्हाई उसका जो प्रोडक्ट एक्टिविटी एक्सपीरियंस वेदर आई ऑर्डर इट इन अ सिटी ए और अ सिटी बी और अ सिटी सी वो बदलता नहीं है मेरे लिए माय पैलेट एडजस्ट्स टू दैट अब ये प्रोडक्ट एट्रीब्यूट तो एक्सपीरियंस गिवन है जब मैं बेरूस का ब्रांड का नाम देखता हूं तो मुझे पता है कि ये मुझे मिलेगा मुझे मिलूंगा बट जिस चैनल पे मैं उसको कंज्यूम कर रहा हूं और कम्युनिकेट कर रहा हूं वो एक्सपीरियंस मेरे लिए कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है दैट इज वेयर द चेंज इज हैपनिंग हाउ आर यू लुकिंग एट यू नो पर्सनलाइजेशन बिकॉज़ टुडे वी हैव द टूल्स वी हैव एआई वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ डेटा एंड इंफॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल how effectively are you personalizing your services and experiences yeah i, I think that's a really big theme uh, because you know if you have a good experience to a customer but normally you know that is more mass like your food is good but yeah that's true for everyone your packaging is good your delivery food comes out it's true for everyone but unless there is an element of there's something differentiated for me you know that uh, that stronger deeper connect doesn't happen and i think in in the today's world with the tech is so much advanced it's really possible to do it so at least how we try to do that and where we see opportunities it it, it can be done everywhere across all customer touch points so from the time uh, you know customer sees you as a brand online say a social media or a digital uh, you know what kind of ad and communication do you see uh, to the point when you get into an app uh, ordering app you know what do you see on the banner when you click into the menu uh, what recommendations you see then leading to you know once your order is done you know how does the uh, brand communicate to you uh, the message sent the copy the text written on the message um, you know when even the rider would call you when the rider will deliver food uh, you know what will rider say will rider say your name uh, uh, when the food is received uh, the way rider will greet you or anything they will say i'm talking about delivery world uh, and you know once order is fulfilled and you have any grievances like how does the customer care team manages it so entire life cycle uh, you know could be personalized uh, what as rebel food we have done is we have tried to at least do some personalization on the the digital and social part where you know we s- target customer cohorts based on their past order their liking their look alike interest in other fields you know what kind of products probably they will like based is what uh, you know customer we acquired in past and show them products and ads and different kind of and now we are doing ab testing between you know what should be the size of product size of the text brand logo size and the color so we are trying to do some of that ab testing to show what they want to see in say typical ads within the app also we have our direct to customer uh, channel each or so there if you open the app 
uh, everyone like Netflix will see a different banner since we have like more than 15 20 brands in a particular location uh, what is the sequence will you see biryani first uh, pizza second meals third everyone will have a different uh, card and even dif- offers are also personalized so we have uh, we know if the user you know avails a certain discount orders a certain average order value we will won't show certain discounts which the customer will not anyways you know apply we show them a selective set of discounts and now we try we want to move to a more personalized uh, way wherein there's an element of going much more advanced in tech there because as we expand our offerings on the platform bring more brands uh, we we can really pinpoint what are the few things customer would want to like based on the past order history and just kind of show a customer that really give them a curated offer which will maximize value to the customer maximize value to the business even post ordering the entire chatbot automation uh, is again un- is a journey i think all food delivery apps are doing that we have also kind of done a significant part of it so all of these are more front facing tech automation we have but since we are more full full stack we produce the food deliver and you know we own the customer also there's a significant bit of bit of tech automation we are doing at the back end when we source a food product from our vendor it goes to a warehouse then it comes to our kitchen then you know the food is processed within the kitchen it is stored and processed and then it is delivered so entire back end supply chain kitchen operations we are doing end to end automation so that you know we know when a food packet when a raw food packet a raw material travels from vendor uh, what time of day what temperature it came to kitchen at uh, where is it placed fifo scanning uh, the entire inventory order management so all of these things you know we have realized that when they are automated they will not only bring cost efficiencies which is a given right all these tech automation will give you massive cost efficiencies and they will uh, you know give you massive profitability but that will also enhance customer experience in a, in a food setup where things are perishable if you are able to trace everything from end to end you can really deliver that quality and consistency uh and you will uh, completely be skill proof manual error proof you know and therefore it will further feed into your customer delight and you know that's how we are trying to progress it both on the front end at the customer end and also back end which is all our kitchen supply chain operations and the entire focus i think right now is on that coming back to you how are you seeing in the cpas space you know different ways people are creating personalization and also leveraging ai I think generative AI and personalization is like uh, has been the holy grail of marketing practitioners, right? Not today; it's been there for like when I used to do advertising many many years ago in Group M, like hyper personalization, dynamic creative optimization. Like as advertisers, we love these words, right? I think generative AI is one which potentially will allow us to bring a lot of these elements, and uh, we do a lot of that work. Uh, but I should say right now. that lot of work that we do at generative ai i have not seen many production worthy use cases getting emerged right what i mean is ki you you start with a poc you do a poc you get some test and then you stop you say you iterate again you then do another poc you stop i have not seen an idea which says that okay this is solved now let's get mass right i think it will still take time and it will evolve but on generative ai current use that i have seen across all is uh, either solving um kind of where you have done rag which is retrieval augmentation of data and fed into a llm on that you have a query which could be a static query or a dynamic nlp query or it could be a natural language processing query which one which one methodology that you use uh, responding out of that fed data around here uh, able to personalize the answer to the question that has been asked is one very active use case second big active use case i have seen is on the creative optimization side right where i have seen people use that tool commercially for a proof of concept to say how it really impacts right some brands i have seen and heard in india as they have done they have done full page ads of a print ad shorten in a span of 24 hours from brief to a delivery of an ad which is then going as a creative copy to a publisher to print it next day or a two days later on a front page ad of times of india equivalent is also being done right so that side is is very much uh, very very much uh, possible but it's very interesting uh, use cases llms are mm, horses for courses koi llm kahi creative mein strong hai kahi textual strong hai kahi numbering mein strong hai to ye evolve hoga yeah yeah ye evolve hoga right but there is a power in personalization with generative ai there is a solid power using it on a channel 
adds much more ease and complexity uh, some channels have for example let's say whatsapp allows carousel in the flow of whatsapp right then you could generate content as a brand to say when they are communicating with whatsapp as a channel they could generate a carousel format dynamically by putting 10 biryanis on the fly on whatsapp or if you are a automobile guy you could potentially put 10 colors of the same car in different angles to woo the consumer mm. and that's the power that dynamism can bring right yeah. so you know the channel what and the, you know the nuances of the channel and then you engage with the channel in that format is the power right yeah. and you if you have to build this within your native app if you have to build this within your native website if you have to build it within your native mobile website it's too much tech i mean like people like Google, Meta's, Lines, Vibers of the world are spending billions of dollars in trying to create super apps. As a brand, you can't compete with them. How do you look at your IP? Like in your business, you look at your IP as the food cuisine that you have. Do you look at the number of users and data you have? How do you look at that? Yeah. Uh, so actually, uh, we know we we look at uh, the entire IP and we call it like I said, operating system. so there are multiple parts of operating system one is culinary side so all the recipes we have of our different products they are all proprietary right uh, you know the biryani and the pizza and the burger the all the elements of the product we have an sop and even beyond that uh, you know the products which go in the sop they come from different vendors and we hold kind of the ips of the food uh, how they are made at the vendors end so uh, you know culinary that is the ip we hold secondly on the on the tech side the entire different kind of systems we are building the inventory management order management delivery the entire uh, the marketing side uh, of uh, tech so those are all built in house you know we have kind of ip of those now we are slowly moving into uh, you know leveraging that ip and you know giving that in a saas model right we can help other restaurants yeah, use that yeah. uh, and even when we are uh, expanding internationally like we are in uk we are in uh the entire middle east so we don't uh, necessarily go, will go with the same model of getting into a cloud kitchen of ours and holding the full stack we can go to various entrepreneurs and say okay you have space you have some kind of infra you take our brands you take our ip you know you run the brands that could be a different model uh you know we can uh, again go to different restaurants and we say okay you have some uh, usable infra you take this ip of you know our recipes our tech uh, and you you run the the business we hold these ips and we are uh, you know as we are strengthening our operating system and we are learning while we get multiple other brands on place you know what is the next level of uh, tweak needed for a different consumer use case could be a cuisine specific could be a consumer use case specific we are strengthening this ip and imagine 10 20 years later uh, you know we will be in multifolds of more locations we'll be in many more countries we'll have many more uh, cuisines and food options to manage that at scale you will need everything uh, you know strong tech led and ip led and the way you can really grow and manage would be you know holding these ips and others can kind of leverage it it is in a franchisee model or any other model i think right now in the stage we are in we are trying to just build these ips and uh, you know kind of uh, hone them how particular are you in terms of like what melin was saying that the experience is on your platform vis-a-vis -vis the experience could be anywhere else yes if i if i divide the entire food value chain there is a food preparation part yeah. which is sourcing to preparation there is uh, the entire commerce part wherein customer comes transacts uh, and then third is the delivery part and fourth will be after delivery sales after you know consumer consumes feedback and everything so the entire food preparation part is ours independent of whatever channel we deliver in so the food uh, till the time a rider picks up it could be a rider from swiggy zomato could be a rider from our each or we control the experience uh, the only part we don't control with the aggregators is uh, the food discovery the menu uh, how the app looks like and the consumer flow and the delivery part where a rider is of a swiggy zomato but in this part also right um, at least the way these platforms are structured the menus we decide the 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 image of the product the mm -hmm. the the copy uh, even the offers mm -hmm. that we decide but the entire obviously app look and feel and the flow is what aggregators decide where we don't have control but we try to give that brand experience uh, similar to our own app everywhere so if a person opens behrus on a swiggy zomato or eat sure that person will know yeah this is the product i have i like i ordered it is the same description same imagery 
you know and, and there is no disconnect what is my incentive as a user to have an eat your app also a third app in the food space right so eat your uh, biggest proposition is multiple restaurants in one order mm-hmm. so if you order from swiggy zomato all of our brands in any other restaurant are listed as a separate entity yeah. so you can order from a restaurant a but you can't add an order from restaurant b in the same order you have to order that and create a separate order for restaurant b restaurant c so that's how they are structured which uh, sometimes is very inconvenient yes yeah. so unless you get into a multi cuisine restaurant which orders everything in a single restaurant you can't but here uh, in our own uh, channel we can uh, the customer can choose from all our multiple brands uh, and also all our uh, say launcher uh, li- licensed brand they can order all that in one order so people don't need to compromise on choices there are not no many multiple apps they need to open multiple orders they need to place in that food comes in one time uh, right instead of if you order from restaurant a b c the food arrives at different points in time uh, so so it's a unified experience for no, this is brilliant. consumer yeah, yeah yeah and this also with your brands like you were saying if you're giving quality products and food which you are anyways giving and you're getting all the other brands also now right. so you are a multi brand yourself Yes, so we, so are you going to be competing with Zomato and Swiggy? So we when I come in with an IPO, <laughs> <laughs> I miss that one. When can I? When can I? So, so basically, we are actually kind of competing with them. Uh, while we are listed on all the aggregators, we ourselves, as you said, uh, a different use case where our own channel is getting powered. We are trying to build more customer choices. Uh, see, we can't com- compete with the Swiggy Zomato on choices, right? If you open any pin code, you will have thousand restaurants for a particular cuisine. we will have not thousand will have few you will have uh, you know all the cuisines in the world possible on a uh, swiggy zomato for for our own channel they'll be select in few but we'll cover all the popular you know, categories nishant i have a question why can't you because somewhere i was just thinking when you were saying this is that when people order on any of these platforms we order a particular thing right like with a particular restaurant right it's not that if i want to eat idli sambar so mujhe pata hai madurai idli se order karna hai so so that that's the power you're trying to build that we yeah. want to we want to cover all the categories and popular cuisines which customer would eat any time of day any time of the week and if you have choices in there you have good quality food choices good quality brands uh, say even one per cuisine then you don't need to have 10 choices right customer they need only one right one good quality choice then the the quantum of choices doesn't matter yeah. so you just need to cover all the your food mission this is brilliant may, may, actually may. Uh, can i can i add one point around here right uh, and somewhere i agree with this line of thought if i was to look at rebel food business differently today from my lens of our lens of communication and customer experiences and what we need to do right i don't see them as food company i don't see them as a tech company i see them as a data company in imagine that you have billion that you have in, billion people in india imagine if imagine rebel if can say rebel I can know say eating i know habits of billion eating habits of, of billion india. people of india i know what they consume i know what they what consume they eat, what they eat that to eat so gee and zomato can so gee and zomato they can say but they can say they don't but control the palate they don't control, these guys the, control palate. the palate these guys control the they palate. are saying i will omni channel part right it's uh, own apps uh, own websites calling uh, zomato this that another nishant you have such a loyal customer base today and you are the largest cloud kitchen out of this country i want to understand from you is that how do you converse communicate with your customers and more importantly make sure that they keep coming back and if you could if you could share for a lot of businesses who would want to get into food is that how to look at the channels how do you you know use yeah. the channels So, so I think we kind of look at our customers by our you know categories we serve in. So we are in multiple food categories. You know there is a you know target segment of customers for each category, and there is an overlap. Right, for example, Behrus would be a more uh, you know a premium mass premium kind of customers who order more indulgent meal, uh, more weekends. I'm just kind of giving a high level contour. Whereas <coughs> a Fasos and a Wendy's, which are wraps and burgers, customer would be more young TG, young couples, college, uh, and obviously family as well. But uh, you know more middle aged who ha- like to have you know snacks, explore different flavors. So we have customer archetypes, which are core target group of the customer uh, of each cuisine and each uh, brand, and we know where these customers are. Uh, while there are you know same digital channels, but there is a preference of each customer. a more affinity towards a particular channel so i think it all starts from that who's your customer uh, who's on which channel so uh, you know we 
uh, in what content or what communication when i say content it's not just video it's copy everything how what yeah. we associate yeah, to, to yeah. that customer mm-hmm. and if you put a brand lens on how the brand persona is brand, brand speaks so that is i think the foundation of it so we we talk to our customers say on instagram on all the uh, social channels uh, the brand talks uh, about the new launches talks about you know the the, the brand stories uh, everyday content you know which you know our creative team cracks uh, basis you know what is different moments of truth and different people so social media is a constant communication channel where you know we post some content we run contests we run trivias and people interact the two way interaction so that's every day every brand every social page that's more ongoing so i have a, another question that the brands that you onboard like wendy's and all that so you manage it for them also naturally so wendy's is more like we hold the master franchise so we run it as our own brand in india uh-huh. uh, but if we have some other brands who are on our operating system as launcher brands they are mad over donuts so naturals the mother brand or parent brand they, they run their own okay, uh, fine. Huh. so one is social media which is a daily engagement uh, channel second would be customers uh, order through our different apps so we use mad over our own channel uh, and uh, you know they they give us feedback when they order food they give us rating they give us comment sometime people uh, you know also leave with really some requests so you know we we get back to them uh, at least uh, you know wherever we have our uh, the phone numbers we get back to them we call them if they didn't like something in the order if we are not clear with their feedback we have a customer delight team which talks to them and you know we understand what went missing or what more can be done so that's another uh, customer touch point we talk to third is you know for our own channel specifically we uh, you know do all these in app banners we do the notification you see you know from different apps <laughs> we 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 talk to them on that so we should download the eat sure app to yes. experience that yes. yeah yeah okay. so the brand the the brand will talk to you uh, in line then we also keep doing customer uh, you know surveys and fgds and both qualitative and quantitative to understand what customers want mm-hmm. in general what are the friction points in their food ordering journey across various missions we we try to uh, you know build solutions around that owning the full stack of the food food supply chain at the same time uh, you know in our own app like when you go on any food ordering app you search things so there's a search history also uh, you know customer sometimes search say vada pav or uh, a fried chicken or someone will uh, say uh, x kind of a biryani so we 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 experience ourselves in our own app like customer search a lot of things which are not there on the app and that also gives us more insight into what customer would like to have yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know customer search is a very powerful uh, so you tra- you track all that yes yes we know uh, when customer type something in search that data at least in our own app that gets recorded <laughs> and we know what uh, what searches has happened in a particular geography it's so important no yes yes yeah, it's yeah. very important and we have developed some food products uh, with those searches and the idea is to how can we build uh, greater insights out of those and uh, uh, you know so that we you know customer search is something that that there's a need for it and how can we fulfill that and and post uh, order interaction which is with with customer call customer agents so again we have the customer experience team uh, customer delight team so you know they talk to customers customers sometimes reach out themselves through uh, you know the app uh, or they call on the customer care number uh, and sometimes we do proactive callings uh, to our customer bases which have tried a particular product or particular uh, offer or particular limited time offer we keep periodic callings to understand uh, how did they like it we t- we keep trying multiple experiments uh and we want to know what how does it perform uh, and just transactions and that data will not give you everything so mm-hmm. talking to a customer is very insightful that that piece uh, do are you using ai <coughs> for your call center or are the people there no no so there are people and we are trying to do more uh, we, say, i call it generative hi which is generative human intelligence <coughs> yeah so Correct. we try to do more uh, say uh, automatable task or mundane task where customer will reach to the point the, the more methodical part is more automated wherever you need more human intelligence and more i would say a deeper interaction then there is an agent like yeah. like everyone in the industry is going towards uh, that you know you reach an agent when it's absolutely necessary to so that's same for us uh, and uh, you know the customer care the agents are there very much i see you as a contender in that space so not only that market share new market share plus that market share so i think you would have any very interesting growth strategy also going back to customer uh so that's a big big strategic uh, pillar for us uh, as i said uh, you, if you do that you have end to end experience yeah. delivered to the customer you can control <clears throat> what happens in the delivery you can control the whole in app experience and uh, you know and you can feed that back 
to your uh, you know what customer mission intelligence yeah, yeah. and yes you are owning the customer directly so which means you know uh, you can there's a better chance of building loyalty and uh, you know getting customers be with you if you are able to serve them so going direct to customer is a big big uh, priority for us i think while i'm listening to you very very carefully i think one area which perhaps if i have to come from my experience of working with more than 3000 different brands all over in the communication spaces if you could take one small pivot which is uh, the only real power is data mm. right if you focus on picking up data signals across multiple areas i think your value proposition could be made much more more powerful what i mean is i know so many places in southeast asia africa and i'm sure you must have also experienced that i travel to indonesia i download gojek i come in india i delete gojek yeah right so the the problem with is that unless you are a permanent native you may have a different experience but what i have seen is my only request for somebody like you would be is to do not get restricted by saying app is only asset your instagram page is also as yes. much an asset yes. your line uh, handle is also as much an Agreed. asset your rcs agent is also an asset Agreed. your whatsapp handle is also an asset right? yeah yeah and i think we are kind of uh, moving to that so <clears throat> most of our packaging if you see they have uh, our instagram page kind of qr you scan you get to our instagram page because right. there we communicate daily so to you our track customers. all the channels yes yeah even all the notifications as in the whatsapp uh, communication we sent out via whatsapp channel so we are we, we understand that you know if you have one say entry point of website or an app then you're kind of bi- binding bi- a customer bi- to correct. a particular and when in today's world when customer digitally moves across different media customer is impatient customer has multiple correct. digital interests if you're not there if you're not you know talking to customer and focusing on that you will probably lose interest of customer in right. how are you thinking on the growth front so we look at again if i split growth as organic and inorganic so inorganic is <clears throat> we put more kitchens uh you know because we are still say 350 400 kitchens in india into say about 70 80 cities but i think the potential is massive so uh you know we want to get into more demand areas where we we don't have cloud kitchens uh do you have we, a number in mind that in the next so so i think it it is again uh, an aspiration we want to you know get say to a three fold count in maybe 5 7 years that's an aspiration 5 7 years yeah that's so if you have say about 350 400 Uh, we would like to have three x of that in about five years. If, th- if that's an aspiration we want would want to chase, uh, and there is enough growth in the market, uh, there is enough demand pockets where uh, you know there is need gap for good quality food within inorganic. Again, we are going more omni channel. Uh, Eat your smart food course, Wendy's offline outlets. Uh, we are also playing with the uh, oven story. Uh, you know offline outlets, our pizza brand offline outlet in a franchisee model. So we want to again be there in a physical space and also interact with our customers. so that that's more uh, say inorganic uh, but organically we want to you know grow our brands uh, in different categories so uh, beat biryani beat beat pizza beat burger we want to we there's enough potential the market is huge and we are still at the tipping uh, tip just at the surface and we know that our brands can grow same kitchen sales growth we call it sksg rebel foods has today in the country demonstrated success and scale yeah. if you had to pick today one or two things that you did right what would those be you know again this is a journey much dated before i was part i think what we did right was we didn't you know get stuck to a particular model or uh, mm-hmm. a way of working we had so we started with the physical uh, retail then we moved to cloud then multi brand cloud then we are now building an operating system to scale multiple big food brands you'll become a saas soon maybe maybe that is one uh, potential but but at each point we understood you know what is limiting uh, if i would say and what is the next growth engine uh, and uh, where where you know <clears throat> kind of what will benefit the business and customers alike and the companies kept pivoting uh, understanding from its i would say mistakes or failures and we we kept moving forward we never got stuck uh that we have done this no no you know uh, we can't unlearn and do, do something new i think that is i think the biggest thing to uh do while you're building a business which is completely new that's which, your dna yeah which which there is no parallel to it and if you are trying to do something like that it definitely will be full of discoveries failures it will be slow but uh, i think you need to be agile and open to you know changes 
it's little more uh, motherhood what i've said but i think that is what at the crux is melin you have seen brands very closely worked and experienced that what he's saying is the the no, absolutely i completely agree so if, if i have to give you this from a perspective of root mobile our success has been singularly attributable to sharp customer focus right we eat sleep drink breathe customer focus right so either we glow f- go for glory which means innovation and cutting edge or we go for revenue uh, these are two clear point okay we would of course have a third point saying how do we make our systems more robust no, no, no. so that and those that but either we gun for glory gun for revenue that one of the two right and if you are gunning for glory and revenue will come if you are very sharply customer focused yeah. right if a particular client is not my partner is only because i am not able to give him a uh, world class service and i am really focused on solving his problem right to aap kabhi bhi dekh lo raat ko 2 baje bhi agar kisi ne hame whatsapp pe message kiya rajdeep ko kiya mujhe kiya ya kisi ko bhi leadership pe kiya people will burn midnight oil to solve that problem because we are in fish business right if i have 24 hours to send a message that message cannot go tomorrow it has to go within that 24 hours if it is going beyond that 24 hours that means you have lost that fish you are now going into a new day and it's a new morning one of the things i was thinking about we grew up at least i grew up in in india where food was less matlab and 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 there, there was a whole respect to food and teen time khana tha shayad do time to now to players like you like you know because you are giving food and for you repeat customer as many times customers ordering i'm just thinking we are becoming a very unhealthy the urban india is unhealthy unfit eating all the time and it's a very it's a larger societal question where i just feel because the food is i'm feeling low let's order how do you look at this it's a very you know right thing and i think uh, and post covid actually most uh, brands uh, most companies not just food everywhere they are becoming cognizant about you know uh, how people are moving towards a healthy space people know what they want to what they are eating what they are getting into so you need to first first part is lay the facts out so if you open most of the food ordering apps including eat sure you'll know the calorie count what 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 are the bigger ingredients that are going into it but at least a person is not making an uninformed call second part is also you know being genuinely right about the ingredients and food you are serving so we at, at least trying to be responsible there where you know the all the ingredients which are partners uh, vendor partners choose we carefully kind of sign sign, sign them off there are certificates on food safety uh, you know all uh, you know there has to be no artificial color flavors uh, so and that is what a promise our each or app also does right because all our brands have you know you know food which is certified uh, you know with uh, with all the licenses uh, the the vendors have certificates of all hygiene uh, and all the good food practices the ingredients is what we uh, you know really are careful about uh but at the same time some of the food which is fried may will will be slightly unhealthy because it's fried there will be some oil in it right so so we want to put those facts out uh, in terms of calories in terms of what is so at least the awareness awareness is there is completely... and if someone is eating a particular cuisine of food that person will make a choice a and when that person has made that choice you have to give best quality food food is emotion and food is addiction <laughs> so yes and you are in a great business so the future of food industry is strong now we will move to rapid fire round what's your go to strategy for turning a dissatisfied customer into a loyal one sorry do we have a dissatisfied customer <laughs> no jokes apart uh, i think our biggest focus has been uh, to ensure we are very sharply customer focused right so bend backwards solve the customer problem is what we are yeah. gunning for right in our world word of mouth is the best and we work with top, out of top 10 brand banks of india six <laughs> banks works with us you can't achieve that unless you have yeah. world class support and yeah support. and no chance of a dissatisfied yeah. no customer. Chance of dissatisfied yeah. customer okay yeah so i think what milin said that's true that if there's a dissatisfaction that comes with the reason and you have to solve that reason so but but in in our industry like if you do some there's some dissatisfaction with the food you are going to consume and there are situations people have a party or you know there there's a kids party or a group party and the food has not arrived or something happens right um and if there's a dissatisfaction that moment you have to do something there and then also uh, apart from solving it say more structurally it can take a few days maybe so you know delighting customers with a with a great meal 
uh, is something we would like to do uh, and you know to kind of make up for the dissatisfaction of whatever it is and then uh, second part is solving it for the future so that it doesn't repeat with any other customer and uh, you know there are multiple and we have data on this there are many events wherein we have had some dissatisfied customer but we have turned them around and they these customers have become proponents only because we were able to solve those issues and uh, when the customers ordered again again and again they didn't encounter those and uh, yeah i think it is important to kind of solve those problems as well as in our industry maybe delight them instantly as well what's one trend in customer engagement that you think is overrated or oh, dynamic creative optimization oh my god that word sounds only too much <laughs> gosh like people just write books on it and i feel uh, they don't impl- uh, do it hopefully generative ai should solve it i think too much uh, uh, sms marketing where people would uh, or companies would try to be close to customers sending them sms whatsapp incessantly kind of getting into their personal space uh, with the ob- obviously pure objective of interacting with them maybe uh, you know that to me is little overrated in the time when you know um, all, all the companies are trying to do the same thing so just sending sms and whatsapp incessantly about yeah say, you know uh, whatsapp has also become incessant yes it, it's, so, it's become in last few months yeah sms what you receive is not marketing it's spam and push right at least whatsapp has very clear consent driven communication right you may choose to communicate with them but there is at least some consent taken right some of these points is that you have random data being stored from somewhere and random guys communicating randomly with you is not sms marketing it's sms spam and unfortunately as practitioners we have not invested <coughs> enough to ensure that we are telling brand don't do this influencer marketing or loyalty programs which one gives better roi so i think uh, if uh, designed well i think loyalty program can give a much higher return because the lifetime value of a customer coming back to you for repeat purchase with a much lower acquisition cost would be far outweighed than a, a you know one of influencer marketing for me none i would want to create a customer experience program i know of no company in the world who is in loyalty space who makes money now if you had to choose one data analytics or creative intuition i would say data analytics i mean data analytics if you could implement one futuristic technology in your business today what would it be responsible ai mm. if you can predict what customer wants to eat and show him yeah or her that yeah. food maybe that mood i'm feeling depressed yes, give yes. me sweets yes and i really want to do responsible in ai in india because we are the only country jahan pe lift man bhi zaruri hai aur lift bhi zaruri hai so if you go to nariman point lift man ch- gets paid 15000 bucks so that he puts somebody up and puts somebody down duniya mein kahin pe bhi lift man shayad abhi bache nahi honge but wo 15000 rupees us 1.3 1.4 billion population ke liye that salary is important the food brand you order the most from this is not a shameless plug but if i choose biryani it's behrus biryani if i you if i choose japanese which my first choice i use a restaurant in pune called yukio that's where i will order from and you yeah for me again uh, it's uh, rebel brands largely because i should have said other than other rebel brands na you didn't say that so so uh, if you talk about frequency of ordering right meals is a more frequent ordering so i order a lot uh, from lunchbox uh, and in wendy's because those are the brand i kind of eat during office days and you know mo- most of our uh, you know even in the office and the friend space and those are the brand which go very regularly but uh, you know weekends is uh, our story behrus okay favorite food related meme or trend that's currently making waves on social media are you i don't know honestly yeah actually the social media trend is so fast there are trends which change change within the day so if you ask me if i have not seen the social media for last uh, say one or two days i will not know the trend so essentially there is nothing which is top of my mind right now but these trends keep coming okay a common misconception about cloud kitchens you want to clear Please, that's only that. Yes, so, so, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> probably some people would uh, search what is a cloud there? kitchen. Uh, do we do I get food from the cloud? So basically, uh, people who know that uh, you know it's a restaurant, I can't visit and feel and touch. Probably, would I get the same experience if I say can go into a physical restaurant, I have food versus a food delivered, but the restaurant which I can't see. Uh, probably, uh, some people might have. 
uh, you know that I don't know and know the brand and don't have the feel and connect with the brand, uh, you know, will the experience in food be as good? And this is a very I think naive uh, concern which someone may have who have not ordered from a particular cloud kitchen. Like for an offline store, the whole store ambience is your branding. For uh, for delivery oriented brands, it's the packaging which is your real estate. So uh, when a customer gets food, apart from the the food which should be good, hot and tasty, you know your packaging uh, should be great and you should communicate with consumers. They should not miss that I'm not eating this food in a physical setting. They should be able to see the brand, the copy what brand is saying, and all the communication around in digital domain, which is app. Hmm. One word to describe the future of the online food industry. It's going to be fascinating if I say uh, there is, as I said, we are excited about how the industry is moving, uh, the whole ecosystem I'm talking about, be it aggregator space, be it the standard restaurant, be it organized player like us. Food is one necessity which, uh, whatever tech does, uh, AI does in future, people will still eat food. Till that happens, I think this industry will go. Till we move to pills. Yeah, we move to pills or. <laughs> No, one word for me is only one, which is experiential. Hmm. Yeah. All the very best, Nishant. Uh, we look forward to Rebel Foods' journey and uh, somewhere we get an indication that everyone who listened to us today should look out for Rebel Foods and all the brands because you are, if not, I would say, going to be. Uh, you're the biggest cloud kitchen and you might just be in like many consumers' mobile phones. Thanks a yeah, lot for yeah. the kind words and thanks for inviting. It was a pleasure uh, meeting both of you and a great, great chat. Yeah, and Milin, thank you. You know, your depth of knowledge on the marketing, on CPAS and of course the collectibles. <laughs> That's a brilliant yeah, idea. It, honestly, it was a very rich conversation. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you.